Let's get the tire off. <clears throat> Okay, looking at this rim, you can see it's small 19. It's a uh, few little issues, dents, which will be taken back out, then sandblast the rim, respray it. The rim is fairly firm, small bit of rust, etc. But it actually makes a really good drawing project. You see the rim is a split rim. It's two sheets telling me that this piece and this piece are two separate pieces, well seamed in the middle. And then the only other issue is your stem valve. There's two revolves attached. We'll draw up the rim and we'll draw up the tire, put the whole thing together, and we'll make an assembly. What I'm doing is representational. What I'm calling the hero is where that piece sits. These are all the different components that I'm putting together, and we'll be calling different parts heroes. It'd make a really nice assembly once the whole thing is back together. Let's start with the wheel rim. So as I had said, the wheel rim is actually two parts. It'd be two components that is probably spun metal. And we know our profile comes down around and lands in. Now what we are saying is this is a representational profile. So the representational is not the hero. The hero we are trying to achieve is our whole outlines for our hub and our exact width across and our exact depth of the wheel plus the position of the hub attachment so be that distance also so our rim is split into two but see we've only one surface body so when we have one surface body we can apply the fillet to represent the weld between component a and component b if we draw it as two individual components, weld surface cannot be created to join it as one component. So to do that, we add a little slot into our revolve, which allows this to actually have a split face. So that slot is 0 0.02 of a millimeter. And it's just there to represent these two lines. Take our sketch from here, drop it down, show our sketch, hide everything else, take this sketch as being our base sketch. So we just go to snipping tool, take a snip, and we're now using this as our base sketch. So lucky enough to have a second monitor, throw that onto a second monitor, and I can reference it back and forth. So we start off, file, new part, go. We're starting on the front plane, we can start in the front or the, the um, right plane, doesn't make a difference, whichever you, you feel more comfortable with. We're adding a line up as our center line for rotation, or making that line vertical, the line turns black. We're adding a line below, keep it on the vertical plane, line turns black, and we're adding a line on the horizontal. And once you can see the little yellow box comes up with the horizontal, that's when we're good. So to start this off, we'll put in our split first. So I'm just drawing out roughly a rectangle with three sides. We're taking the small line, select midpoint, select our uh, horizontal line, make coincident. Now you can also use make midpoint. If we look at our sketch, we know that that line is 70 out. So we drop out 70. And we know it's cross distance we had said was 0 0.02. Now, when we build our um, wheel rim, this will be our secondary split. So we start off with the rest. We drop a construction line. We know we have to go up 54 and we are coming out 107. So we might as well go from this, we come out. We're saying this is 107. I'm using no shortcuts or anything of that description. You know that this line from the center is 57 
It's 54 plus two for our thickness because on this one we've actually moved our origin point. So that's 56, 107. And we know our next line out has to be our 98, which is the inside of the rim. So from here to here, we leave at 98. So we draw in a line here, drag it across horizontal, and we say this distance is 13. So that from that 13 distance then, when we clean up our sketch, we can start our drawing. Trim, trim off this. Then we start with our line, our 107. We travel back, travel here to our 98, down. We leave it at that. We add our fillet of 1.5, drop that fillet there, click. We know our degree is 60, drop it out, 60. Sets that up. The horizontal line is two millimeters above our center. We know it's 73.5 long, which gives it there. We add our next line up anywhere random, but we know that that line is 25 degrees. Traveling up the way, 25. Oh, we know that line is 10.6. We want to add three point arc, and we know the radius of this arc is 55. And on that 55 then, we have two five mil Spaces, one, two, okay. Now this virtual sharp is what we require. We come from our top line to that virtual sharp. You can see a highlight when the two arrows highlight. And we know that is a 15. We know our virtual sharp down here. Actually we want to take off that. Select our virtual sharp. We go from this point to our sharp. Sometimes the virtual sharps can be hard to get. Still won't allow me to select the sharp. If you pull back your line. Now, you can see that the virtual sharp clicked there. So, you know, from that point to this point, it needs to be 10.6. There's the top of our rim. So we can see our full outline. So we travel down, we do the next set of outline. So we know this lower Section is 92. Since this is the bottom of our rim, we know it's 94 because it's the midpoint. So on that 94, we can then travel out the same as the top section. Just click this line, this line, and we say it are equals. So then we need to extend this line down, and that gives us our 98. So we can start drawing again. So we go from our 107 and travel back to our 98. Travel up. Now, travel out at 45. Travel vertical, travel in at 45, and we leave it. So we're just laying out some groundwork for the next one. So add, add, and we say that's 60. Now from this to our horizontal is 13. We know from this to our base here is 25. We know from our point to our point is 10. We know from this point to here is the only mistake I have in the drawing. It is actually two mil. From here to here is 45 degrees. That sets our others, other one at 45 degrees as well. And there's the opposite side done. We will add a 1.5 radius from this line to here. Make it the same as the top. Then we'll add 0.5s on these three points to there. Now we just have the next piece to contend with. We drop our line down, drag it out. We're saying 
that this line, or 73.5, and this line are equals. We can drop from our center to here. We know it is two millimeters. And then we can come out this point, travel down. I know that is sitting at a 25 degree arc, 25. So the center here and the center to far side is pretty much, um, pretty much the same. We have our two degree slot and our 10 degree. Now we have two arcs here to travel. So we go one arc from here to here. Arcs can be left anywhere from here to here. To flip it back around. Okay, we know our lower arc has to be tangent to the, the line. We know we need two five mil arcs for here, for this line. It's the two fives. We need a sharp for here and here. So click the two lines, click point. That gives us our sharp. We know that that sharp comes below this line, five millimeters. Okay, sometimes this can be quite tricky to lay out, but it's about kind of playing with the arcs to make sure that everything lines up. So we know our inner arc here has a radius of 35. So we add in that 35. We know that this arc has a radius of five, which is measured there. But our 35 arc is too big. So we'd have to play back and forth. Something like that. So you might have to twist the lines. The end of this line, we know is a 10.6. We know this radius is 170. And there is our sketch. Now for our final, we just need to add our two ends to close in our sketch. So we're going from here to here. And then we're going same from there to there. And that gives us our full uninterrupted sketch. We want features, revolve, the sketch is currently open. No, we don't need this. We click on this axis. We want the two millimeters, one direction, thin wall feature, and we just make sure our wall is on the outside, which it is. And we click OK. When we put our revolve on the outside, it actually makes the depth of the object one mil bigger on either end. For accuracy sake, we have to take that one millimeter off. So if we go here, we have our two major settings. So we have our 94 and our 56. So if we turn our 94 to a 93, there's no issue. And our 56 goes to 55, we close. Our rim is back and we know our rim was a six inch outer to outer rim. Six inch, 150 millimeters outer to outer. So that's the reason why you would do a lot of the rims and projects like this because it allows you to change on the fly measurements. Okay, let's put in our center detail. So we have our rim. We're just going to drop in our hub mounts. So file, sketch, drag it through. This center is 68. We know that we have four holes on the outside this center for our four bolts. Those holes are going to be in at um, a 45 radius. And they're a nine millimeter hole. Our pattern, which is our circular pattern, pick the outside of the rim. Patterns to mirror. Sometimes that will happen. The parameter will not select. It happens nearly in all versions of SOLIDWORKS. So you'll just have to go back, click the box, 
and go edge parameter. Make sure justify positions of the holes. So you can do it that way or you can put in a 90 angle. You put in the 90 angle probably would be the best. Just in case we ever need to rectify it again, more unlikely you won't. So that makes everything black. Features, extrude, through all, click. All the work that we've put in, there's our split line. That was all we were requiring. Okay, so we put in our air valve at the cross section between two nuts. We have to put in another plane. Go, features, reference geometry, plane. We're dropping the plane between the right plane and the front plane. See their plane is now 45. Click and go. Now we have a 45 degree plane. Bring it up, normal two. Use our section command. And we want to draw a line on this plane. So I've just got plane one, normal two, sketch, line, done. Not major. Draw line, construction line from origin. We will put it this line in as 35 maybe. 35 probably be good. Measure our line down, so we say 110. We can then specify a length if required, just to clean things up. And we can go to features, close off our sketch, sweep cut, click our line. We are going for circular profile, and we know our stem valve says a nine, add it as a nine. Our profile is that profile, and our selection manager, we say yes. Sweep, cut, cut. Close. We right click our plane, select hide. Material not specified, we click plane carbon. File, up, ISO. Okay, we want to add the weld that holds the two sections together. So for this, I'm going to use a fillet, five mil fillet, and just drop that fillet right there. That is pretty much the same as the rim we have. The fillet might be a little smaller, it might be three mil. Yeah, it's probably a three mil fillet the whole way around. But that piece now, when we split it, is one body with that split that is an exact representational model of the rim. It's not exactly what the rim is, but from a modeling point of view, it has all the features just to finish it up, smooth out any sharp edges, that edge. That edge are both sharp, so you can just add a few little bits and pieces like that around the model finish it off put in a 0 0.5 for that internal edge there because it didn't get it's 0 0.5 on the outside we could add it here as well and we also train one here so you do them all one here one here and this is just practical cleaning of the model so when that renders up that will actually a nice rim it's not exactly what is in the workshop but it is very very close and close enough to get what we require for our model. Our main parameters was the center, the detail for the hub, so our four holes in our centers, internal width for the tire, external width and internal radius so that we know it fits in on either side. In the next tutorial, we'll have to put together the tire. These tutorials are quite simple, but they're kind of long to explain. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Till the next time.